And so it is that as Jesus sits teaching one afternoon, a group of folks who've heard about Jesus bring to him a friend of theirs who is paralyzed. And because Jesus is busy when they arrive and is behind closed doors and is virtually inaccessible, this group of folks conspires to bring their friend up on the roof, find an opening in the roof, and then gently and carefully lower their friend so that he is suddenly right there before Jesus. Jesus then, amazed by this group's act of care and concern, heals the man, explaining to his friends that it is their faith that has made the man whole. When he saw their faith, the text says, not the paralytic man's faith, his friend's faith, When he saw their faith, he made the man whole. It's a beautiful story. It's a story of friendship and of love and of physical liberation. And it is also a story of faith as advocacy. For let us consider, the man in this story He's paralyzed. Presumably, he has been for quite some time. On his own, he cannot possibly get to Jesus. In fact, even with loving friends, he can't just get to Jesus simply and directly. In other words, the man is mired in a situation over which he has little to no agency at all. Which is to say, all the personal responsibility in the world, in and of itself, will not enable him to access the care and the support that he so desperately needs. And so, knowing this, a group of others band together to get the man what he needs. These others bring him the distance from wherever it is that they live to the village and to the home in which Jesus is teaching. And then, after having gotten him there, seeing that the crowds are swarming Jesus, seeing that they are not going to be able to get to Jesus in this fashion, they go so far as to put their heads together to figure out how to move their friend to the front of the line to finally get him the access that he needs. And they do. And crucially, for our understanding of this story, crucially, it is when Jesus sees the links that these friends have gone to in order to get their friend to him. That is when Jesus reacts to their faith and heals the paralytic man. It is a lovely story indeed. What good is it, my brothers and my sisters, if someone claims to have faith but no works. This is what James, the brother of Jesus, writes in the epistle bearing his name. Show me your faith apart from works, James says, and I by works will show you my faith. This verse, significant in the history of Protestant theology, This verse is an important corrective to a tendency within the Christian church to reduce faith to mere belief in an idea. The important thing we can sometimes be lulled into thinking is just to believe the right thing. And then after that, what we choose to do about that belief, we think, is secondary. 
If we want to work to make the world a better place, great. If we want to serve others and be involved in righting wrongs and attending to here and now injustices, wonderful. But that's just a choice we can be lulled into thinking, not the heart of the gospel. For the heart of the gospel, we can allow ourselves to think, is simply to believe that Jesus was indeed who he said he was. Now, I overstate this to make my point, but I'm sure we can all recognize the truth in this exaggeration. For as children of the Protestant Reformation, we have had it drilled into our heads since we were young that what really matters, that what we are justified by is our faith alone, that we can't earn our justification through works, right? And what tends to follow from that then is that any sort of works are secondary in nature and are indeed optional in the final analysis. But here again, James, the brother of Jesus. What good is it, my brothers and my sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no works? Show me your faith apart from works, and I, by my works, will show you faith. Which leads me back to our gospel lesson. And an important thing I want to point out about this passage from Luke chapter 5. Something that is easily overlooked. It is the advocacy. It is the work of others that enables the healing of the paralytic man in this particular story. It isn't the paralytic man's fervent belief. And it isn't just his friend's fervent belief either. It's instead the act of bringing their friend all the way to Jesus. It's the act of, upon seeing how much still stands between their friend and the care he needs, then finding a way through the obstruction in order to get him to the front of the line. It is this that ultimately yields in the healing of Jesus. Do you follow that? It is their intentionality. It is their dogged commitment to act on behalf of their faith that gets their friend healed. It is their work. But here's the other important thing that I want to point out about this passage. It isn't just their act. It isn't just their work. It is also their faith. When he saw their faith, the text says. That's when Jesus was moved to heal the man. In other words, these advocates didn't just act out of care and compassion and a sense of moral righteousness, mindless about why they were doing it and about who it was that they were approaching. Instead, they were coming to Jesus with this man for a very specific purpose. Because they believed Jesus was who he said he was. They believed it. And then note now this. The Pharisees and the scribes in this passage, these curmudgeons as they come off in this passage, the ones who were offended by this whole scene in this passage, these folks would have been fine if Jesus had just healed the man. He'd been healing folks all day, according to the text. They were good with that. For it wasn't the compassionate act that offended them. It was the suggestion that Jesus really was who he said he was. It was not the work part of this passage that offended them. It was the faith part. And so here then is another temptation, the opposite temptation, 
that we as 21st century Christians face. Some of us, as we said earlier, are tempted to reduce our faith to mere belief, becoming relatively unconcerned with questions of work. But conversely, others of us are tempted to reduce our faith to work, becoming relatively unconcerned with questions of belief. Like the scribes and the Pharisees, many of us as Christians are quite happy with good work being done. However, when questions of belief in Jesus get raised, many of us begin to demur, distancing ourselves from any definitive claims about Jesus actually being who he said he was. Feed the poor? Absolutely. Stand up against things like economic and racial injustice? Sign us up. Lobby for fair housing or lending laws? What time should we arrive? But confess then that we're doing it because we believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnate and that God raised him from the dead and that he is the way vouchsafed to humankind to enter into the splendor of redeemed eternal life? Well, that feels somehow naive or simple-minded to some of us. And so the point then of this sermon It is and it must be both and. Christian faith is both faith and works. It is both spiritual evangelism and here and now advocacy. It is following Jesus as both Lord and Savior. It is working to make it more on earth as it is in heaven and, in so doing, believing that heaven is more than just an empty metaphor. This very day, dear family, there are countless ways that we need to emulate the paralytic man's friends. Which is to say there are countless people who cannot access the care or the resources or the support that they desperately need. Whether it's because of physical or financial limitations. Whether it's because of unjust laws or structural inequities. Whether it's because of poor decisions or a simple absence of understanding. For any number of reasons, countless of our brothers and sisters cannot, of their own accord, get to the help or the relief that they need in order to be released from their particular circumstance of bondage. And thus we who have some degree of agency, we who have the means or the connections or the understanding to help some folks get the help or relief that they need. We, like the paralytic man's friends, are called as Christians to be intentional and to be committed in discerning how best to try to help them get such things. Without such care and concern and action, our faith, without any attendant works, is a lame thing indeed. But as we work in Jesus' name to advocate for these, our brothers and sisters, we must also do so out of our deep belief that Jesus really was and is who he said he was and is. That he was indeed the embodiment of the one who spun the world in being. That he is indeed the one with the power to forgive sins on earth and to restore our broken humanity to a state of flourishing. And moreover, finally, we need to do so out of a core conviction that these truths are the very reason why we follow him and commit to bettering the world in his name. Not just because he was a good and admirable man, but because he was indeed the revelation of creator God to all of humankind. Lord and Savior, faith and works, 
evangelism and advocacy. Heaven and earth. Both and. Yes, one day long ago, a group of friends believed the claims this Jesus of Nazareth was making concerning his identity as the Son of God. And because they did, they endeavored to bring before this man their friend who was suffering under the burden of a crippling paralysis. And when this Jesus saw the coupling of their faith and their works, he was amazed and their friend was made whole. Might we all these years later likewise couple our faith and our works that we might amaze the entire world around us and so that some of those suffering currently under the weight of this broken world might indeed themselves be made whole. And all God's people said, Amen. And I'll be down front now to receive any who this